We were talking the other day about why these creatures that are live in total darkness are colorful. Why go to the trouble to make a pigment if there's no light down here at all? And? I mean, I think it's the, the scientific answer is we're, we're not quite sure, but the thought was that perhaps that pigment serves some other function, like it doesn't taste good or has some sort of um, other function and it just happens to be a color as well. Or it could be left over from when these creatures were evolving in shallower waters. But it's all just speculation. Or there's something down here that can see way better than we can. <laughs> yeah, release the Kraken. What was the, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the author that wrote The Martian. Oh yeah, Andy Weir. Yeah, have you read his latest one? It is so good. The one on Project the Project Hail Mary. No, oh. the one that came after it. The one that happened on the moon, Artemis, was not so great. Project Hail Mary, that definitely awesome. the best book I read this year, for yeah, sure. And I read the entire Expanse series this year. All right, well, you heard, you heard it here, friends. Pilot Project Hail Mary is epic. Project so Hail Mary, a hit with ROV like pilots everywhere. One How of did the he hear colors? How did he hear colors? <laughs> um, it was amazing. It's like one of the few optimistic science fiction books I've ever read. Most of them are like horribly pessimistic and dystopian. It's like about like friendship and stuff. It's like almost a buddy comedy. That's great. Can't wait for the movie. <laughs> oh yeah. It won't be nearly as good as the book, of course. There's an eel well, right think, there in I front of us. I think it's like Ryan oh, yeah. Gosling yeah, as the like eel. little eel, more complex version of his uh, previous. Or is that little cusk eel, maybe? Oh, I'm getting a little stretched out. Sorry, guys. Uh, no, you're not. I need to come down. I'm 35 oh, okay. meters up. <sighs> yep. I'm going to keep coming down, actually, Dan. Roger. Another beautiful anemone. Yeah, we're, uh, thanks on the science chat. The corals have two types of pigment. The pigment that's in the tissue and the pigment that's in the skeleton are very different. That's why when we see those black corals, they don't look black to our eye. They're yellow. The tissue is yellow and the skeleton is black. Did he hear colors, Dan? I don't remember that part. Rocky? Um, yeah. I forget their conversation about colors. It was It's just a wavelength, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but he but this this alien only com only did sound. He had he grew up on a world where there was no, like, basically no incoming solar radiation at all. It was, like, totally black. So we did everything by sound. Makes sense. He didn't even know... Oh, it's so good. You just have to read. <laughs> oh Echolocation. Yeah. Can we zoom out a bit on high pack? Just a couple of clicks? Yeah, even absolutely. Even his, Let's do it. His uh, monitors were... Look at the attachment on that sponge, that tiny... Oh, yeah. yeah. That's good. Uh, the, si the big sideways ear one, mm -hmm. the Dumbo ear. Um, I was gonna go with uh, Spock, so the but blue yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Argus, and the pink lines are Hercules on this okay. iPad screen. Let's see what we're doing here. That we're still in Sponge Land. Yeah. What yeah. is happening? I'm about to make another move. Everyone, cool with oh, that? Oh boy. Yeah. yeah let's, let's do it. Do it. <laughs> let's wild. do it. Bridge nap. Black coral. Can we please move three zero meters bearing uh, two three zero? Thank you. There's now we're into like heavy duty coral land here. 
Yeah, sponges might be just starting to drop off, but oh, if you could turn around. <laughs> It's a lot of stuff behind you. I don't know if it's corals or that sponges. That looks like corals, yeah. but I do see maybe one sponge. Yeah, there's one. Two. Three. <laughs> yeah, eating my words. Um, yeah, there's yeah. a bunch of bigger <laughs> <laughs> there's a bunch of bigger sponges just coming into view wow. with Argus there. Yeah, it's getting pretty busy. It's like we're getting some new viewers as the morning hours approach on the east coast of the US. Welcome if you're just joining us. We are diving on Don Quixote Seamount in Papahanaumokuakea Marine Monument. Checking out coral and sponge communities, and it's been uh, quite extensive this whole dive. Both abundance and diversity. And over a pretty good depth range so far. Yeah. We've dropped down about 50 meters from the ridge. Mm -hmm. Are those 10 meter contours on the high pack? Yeah, they're, they're 10 meter contours. So what you're seeing on channel three is uh, what we call the high pack view that helps, uh, helps our navigator and the ship and our pilots keep it all together. <laughs> And of course, underneath that is the mapping. We had detailed mapping on this seamount. that white ball floating by? Already. Oh, what is that? Can you get a focus on it? It's a baby. What it's, are you? Is it a you? jelly? Oh, it must be a jelly, hey? Uh, not, let's see. Oh, what? it's really cute. Very spherical. <laughs> it's very spherical. <laughs> oh. I don't see any tentacles. Yeah. The so egg, maybe. So around. Um, I've definitely found easier things to follow. You're doing great. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. Oh. Whoa. It coming wider. Okay. <laughs> Just a nice little, work. Little guy. It's yeah. very buoyant. It's certainly something. So. In the Central Pacific on the 2019 cruise, we came across these little grape-like things, but they were resting in the sediment, and they were uh, gromids. They're <laughs> giant. <laughs> that clarifies giant, things not yes. at all. <laughs> giant protists. They were unicellular, but they were visible. No kidding. Whoa. Wow. And, uh, That's crazy. They had only been discovered in 2012, I think, in the Red Sea, and then a, a few were spotted around Bermuda, and then we saw, I guess they had been seen around the Clarion and Clipperton zone, but... That's you, amazing. Do you think that could have been disturbed by our thrusters? It may be, we yeah. Were, we weren't too low. But, but those... Oh, we're five meters up. The ones we saw were in a, kind of a very fine sediment. There's not much sediment around here. Is that what it looked like to you, though? Pretty similar. This about that size. Oh. Little Want underwater the grape. Lasers yeah. back on. I turned them back on. They There's move a like a, amoebas. They uh. Where was the fish? It's, it's a little red. It's, uh, oh, little like red a spot there. Rockfish or something. Yeah. Is it one of those angler cute, fishes? Cute one. It might be an angler. Yeah. yeah. Let me see what I can get. That's they totally are darn what it is. cute with their frowns. Oh, let me see. They look can like I, they are having zoom? the zoom. worst day. La <laughs> uh, can we get lasers off? <laughs> oh, he's super frowny. <laughs> oh. But they have knees. That's my favorite thing about them. They have knees. They have knees. They crouch. They're adorable. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> I love you, little fish. Oh. <laughs> oh, right. oh, see, did you see him move his little knees? We love you, little fish. You know they can't hear you. <laughs> Spiritually, they can. Okay, go wide. <laughs> Look how beautiful He's, that he is. He is a deer. Spiritually. Fish, <laughs> now. We're not trying to disturb you, buddy. You're beautiful. Okay, you see the shadow. Yeah. Can we make that same? It's a very move, pretty please? spot here. Three zero yeah, meters, bearing two three zero. 
I should probably catch up. Is that here. that bizarre crusty? Oh stuff? yeah, look at that. Can we get a zoom? I'm just looking at the sediment here. It just seems weird. This here? Yeah. It's just it has a different sort That's of. What the last watch thing. was seeing too. Oh, it looks like mm -hmm. um you know like underneath a bird feeder where all the sunflower yes. seed yeah. shells go. Yeah. yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah, I saw something like that at Johnston Atoll. I couldn't figure it oh, out. Oh, really? Okay, go wide. It's just like patches of it. We could uh, slurp some up. We could. Do you guys want to slurp? They, the, la the last watch, nah. They, the last watch poked it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> they are you trying to make Dan jealous? Yeah, I think you are. <laughs> the last watch got a core sample You won't it. let him core sample. <laughs> you won't let him slurp. <laughs> We've it's barely right, picked um, up any rocks. I'm just offering. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the last one. <laughs> Darn, 8 to 12. So do all the fun stuff. Oh, that little anglerfish was so cute. Yes. That might be my, I think that was the first anglerfish I've seen on watch. Ever. Oh, yeah. really? Adorable. So when they crouch, you can, you look at their like sort of, maybe they're called like pelvic fins or something like that. They're, and they, um, they're like attached to like actual knees. Aww. Like they have joints there somehow. It just blows my mind. They look, and when they move along the seabed, they look like they're walking. Super weird. Awesome. So is that, if, I imagine the anglerfish had a, a like a mimic bait. Uh, off of its head. Am I thinking of something else? No, that that's there's definitely some very gnarly looking anglerfish that have that so little dangling. Different kinds? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm trying to do some. Does that one have one that's something in its mouth? No. I don't know. Okay. It it's has just called like, an anglerfish. No? I I think it has like a spot on its head, not just projecting out from its head. That is tempting. There gotcha. might yeah, there might be some um, bioluminescence going on or something. Or it's oh, cool. just it's extreme cuteness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's grumpy nature <laughs> just <laughs> makes everybody come to try to cheer him up and then he's like slurp. Yeah. That's how we got lured in. <laughs> yeah, totally. Did you see how fast I got out of there? I was not tricked. <laughs> His uh, crouchiness brings the boys to the yard. <laughs> I still love the milkshake. <laughs> still a lot of sponges down yeah, here. Yeah, there is. I don't know how far down we want to go to establish the but, yeah. lower limit here. So I think the species uh, or the family, or, or gen no, here I'm at genus, is uh, Chonocops on those fish, the, the fish that we just saw. And they have like a, a pit on their head between their eyes. It's that brings all the boys to the yard. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> yeah. It, it's not quite as dangly as the as the one that you might think of, which is a very large, scary-looking thing with a with, with the with big a, teeth, right? With the, yeah, with the yeah. bait lure on the stock. Our guy is is grumpy, but much you know, much, much less scary. Yeah. yeah, that's the Chonocops. I'm not gonna guess a species. Um, Come on, artists. Settle out. Do you have any guess as to what I makes it do that? I mean they're we're losing both at the same time. They're yeah. both they're both pretty close to each other. So like I, do you think it's like a feature in the water column? I think in this case no. I think it might be something to do with the Could slant be? angle that we're just oriented to the ship and the ship's orientation. What if? But I'm not positive. What if? What's the thrust look like? They're not like doing if, anything. if we sent a bunch of bubbles across that transducer, it would struggle. Yeah. yeah I don't think we're. Yeah, I that don't could think be. We're, doing that. If we're not doing much thrust. So I can pull okay. up. Do you want me to show you on this left screen really quick? Yeah, sure. This is all I know. No range received, no range received. And this has been happening since pretty much for the last hour. We're still getting it, lots of sponges on the Argus view. Um, yeah. Started coming up. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's more on Argus than it is Herc. I think we might as well keep going till yeah. till we see the lower limit. And I think hasn't those contour lines look very consistent so that 
Yep. So in, it's a consistent slope. Steady slope. It's uh -huh. felt really, really consistent, like in reality. Like it's you been. Can, you can see um, on the monitor here in front of me. I don't know if you guys can see from mm -hmm. back there. We started out around 1910 and we're down 1970. So that's. The whole screen is an hour there. So oh, neat. Half an hour coming up on the top and half an hour on the. Well, this. This descent is like as as straightforward as descents go. So yeah. I'm I'm happy to keep doing this. Have you felt much current? Nope. No. It's, it's we've now got that. I don't know if it's because the direction we're moving, but we have the tether in our face. Well, the um, it looks like the uh, sponges are telling us it's coming from the east, right? Yeah, maybe southeast. Okay. East or southeast? I guess I'm I'm facing northeast now, and if they're sort of facing a few different directions, mm -hmm. like that one's facing north-ish, maybe northeast here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's that pink coral there. Yeah, it's, it's definitely piece facing east. Yes. So like, there's a sponge growing on a side of a rock that would be blocked from the east. Mm. I don't know why we don't have a valley port instrument on this yeah. vehicle that tells us the current. Oh, Valport makes one of those. Yeah. What I mean, do they? What is it? You hook in the uh, you hook in the uh, octans data, and it zeroes all that out and gives you a huh. tells you what the current is. Oh. Some little electrodes in the top of it, and it senses the. Was the consensus to keep on. heading downhill? Yes. Yes. Bridge now. Can we make that same move? Three zero meters bearing two three zero. Put one of those Thank on you. our Christmas wish list, Gabby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's Argus GUI. But you can pull that up on any any machine. Let's go to a ship house graphs. So as we continue to explore, let us know your questions at nautiluslive.org. Kate can do it too. Just, yeah. Um, do you know what it's titled? Uh, go back to the one you had. And see that one right there? Click on the down arrow where it says Argus and Herc depth. And then click view. There you go. And then in the top right, you zoom? can change the time. I think it defaults to 15 minutes, so I just... I don't know why I find soft corals to be so charismatic. Is it possible to get I do this too. depth chart? I don't know. what They just seem so... On. Like, they're amazing. Lovely and soft. They're sweet. so cool. Okay. So I'm going to get out of here. You can uh, check out on Sat Feed 3 or Channel 3 if you're on YouTube, seeing a depth chart. Oh, the depth chart left us. Actually, all that, all that That's stuff okay. is available on the uh, website as well now. I've been told all the Grafana data that we're uh, looking at here. Uh, the depth is, but I don't, can viewers find this chart? Um, yeah, I'm not sure if they can. I'm pretty sure there's an interactive. Uh, I'll look for that. Good tip. And I'm not sure if they can change the time and the scale sure. and all that stuff around, but. So, so is that a representation of the whole dive? So no, far? that's she just has the last hour there. I see. Okay. So you can pick, uh, and yeah, the last year, or the last three days, <laughs> or. There's the last three hours. Go for zoom. There's a fish underneath the sponge here. Oh, good eye. He's hiding. He thinks he's getting away with it. <laughs> Thanks for that. That was that was super cool uh, graph there. Does this look like that modeled? Oh no, that's a. It's not an eel shaped. shaped. Yeah. Yeah, it's fatter. Can we zoom on the head, neck, head, shoulders area? Zoom in. Yeah. Uh. It's it looks like scratched on the top of the head. 
Definitely coming down a bit. Yeah, thanks. Whoever spied that gets a gold star. That was a great spot. That was Gabby. Does modified. Nice I'll modified take chocolate. Fins All to right. feel the bottom. Whoa. Oh yeah, he does have fins to feel the bottom. Is that what's up near the? Yeah. The His head? little whiskers. It's like yeah. whiskers. Oh. It's kind it's like of twigs. reminds me of. And I wonder what it looks like when he fans out his top fin. It seems like he's laying it down a little bit. And his side fins. Okay. A little struggling. All right. Good zoom. Adequate zoom. That reminds me of the fish that we weren't able to identify on that first dive. Mm. But I don't really know. I don't, I'm no expert, so. Let's just drop another target and have uh, sponges continue. I think Kate has a headache. Oh. We need to give her a second. <laughs> the um, Kate, can I we drop a pin in? Yeah, absolutely. For con sponges continue? We got it. This looks serious. That's the best stuff right there. That's Tony's. Oh my god. Yeah, you need yeah, to hammer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. If you slide to your right a bit, there might be a more of a feature. I don't know if you'll hit it from there or not. But. Dan is a geologist. He doesn't huh? like to admit it. <laughs> Always with the rocks and the geolog and the geologic features. He's actually a sonar whisperer. <laughs> is what it really is. <laughs> he would like you to believe that he is not. But I'll stare at one for a little while. <laughs> Doesn't look like too much off to the right, but to the left of Herc, down is more sponges. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, is that sediment to the right? I'm assuming you guys want to keep moving down slope unless... Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll keep it in. Bridge now. I think I'm all suggesting you... Oh, I was going to say... Um, the it's okay. lines there in Argus. Can we make that same move? Um, three zero meters. I was kind of thinking two, three, zero. Um, that we had a really good thing going on until I looked away, and now we don't. Um, well, there's something over there, but yeah, like it seems 60, like a little seam. Sixty meters away. Yeah, when I try and get over there, I sort of get stretched out. When I try and get over there with all my autos on, I sort of get stretched out. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that like being strung out? Back and down where my, I, we're seeing it anyways. See, the, the sponges are preferring that rocky substrate. See how they're right there? Yeah. They're just on things that they like boulders. Yeah, totally. Here, uh, look at the seam in, um, in Argus. Yeah. That they're they, all just sort of living in. Yeah, they want the bouldery type. Even if it's pillowy, you know, they like undulation. Is that the correct term? Something up off the bottom. Yeah. Elevation, maybe. Yeah. Can we get the lasers back on, please? Thanks. We have been utterly spoiled on this dive by visibility, mm. or on this whole cruise. Yeah, we have. This is like, I don't think I've ever driven Herc so much by the Argus view. <laughs> I'm like mostly piloting in Argus. Sponges just keep on, they just keep on keeping on. Yeah. 
So now we're at 2,000. I loved that profile that you had there, Dan. Oh, it's just, it's at the bottom of my Grafana. Yeah, <laughs> you changed it. Oh, yeah, okay. You can't yeah. see it as well because it's on a different... Uh, yeah, time scale. Yeah, yeah. So if you go to nautiluslive.org and you will see the basic depth and temperature and heading data on the left of the website, in that sidebar at the bottom, it says more data. If you click on that, you get to that uh, Grafana data that uh, we sometimes display in sat feed three of the quad view or channel three on our website. And then there's not really any sponges on this super smooth rock here. No, there isn't. That's right. what I mean. They, well, it wants like yeah. a rocky or undulating surface. Yeah. yeah. Like a really disturbed surface. Yeah, something that what I'm thinking is something that's creating turbulence. Oh, interesting so not so that's an interesting thought that it isn't isn't necessarily all about what the sponge is attached to but like what the what happens to the water right, around it yeah right so it wants turbulence oh this is a cool view just like looking down this hill mm -hmm. at yeah. all the sponges wow. it's high There's density one of those uh rake yeah, yeah. Again, or trident or it's maybe not a trident you kind of have to zoom in on that main branch uh, to see, I mean, you don't have to do it now, but that was the part that the yeah, it's science a little chat hard to see. was interested in. Like, look at all those sponges. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, can you go back to 20 meter boxes on the uh, oh, yeah, when you get absolutely. a chance? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sorry about that. That's all right. There we go. I'm and it could also be that the rock might, certain rock might have different chemical constituents. So one flow might have just, you know, slightly more iron or slightly more magnesium or slightly more something, right? And potentially that the sponges favor those rocks is another hypothesis. So I thought, well, what we should do is take a whole bunch of different types of basalt and go like drop them down into the abyssal plane and go check on them every 10 years. How, what's the growth they rate? They've done of? exactly that. Yeah, where is it? Uh, the Canadians are doing that with their soap dishes, huh. as we call it. They're literally soap dishes on a Bridge, no? uh, PVC array. At least like around 20 different substrates. Can do the same move? Three zero meters. And, and what bearing, have they seen? Uh, I don't zero. know. It was probably oh. 10 years ago that they were putting those things out. What so the, they weren't made of basalt, though? Uh, they had different substrate in the soap dishes and different rocks. And I've, I helped them put down whalebone. Oh, that's a... I nearly had to throw out the DeWalt drill that I used to drill through the whalebone. Oh. Um, because that is a smell. Mm. <laughs> a smell. Yeah. Where put, I forget where they were putting them. Somewhere off the West Coast. I think, well, I think we did some in the uh, Discovery Corridor off the East Coast. Of is that the red coral that we were interested well? in maybe getting get some zoom? zooms on? Same scientists. I Let's think we determined that it was probably Paragorgia. Oh, this guy? Yeah. It's not the greatest angle. Thanks. No, it's not, is it? It's a nice color, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Come away. Yeah, not going to see that much. So we have about an hour left on our watch. Time flies when you're having yeah, fun. Yeah, these watches fly. So we, yeah, we went up at local high, at local knoll, found some high density sponges, came down, regained the track from our previous dive, found the high density sponges. Now we've been going down the slope and we've descended. Oh my gosh. Dan, uh, I just saw, I just noticed Argus altitude is on my screen. I've been switching to Argus this whole time. 
All the data I need is right there. We're still Sponge City. 100 okay, meters or so. Grafana. See any rock you like? To read. Oh. No. Argus Altitude's on here too? Yep. Oh my gosh. It was supposed to be heading depth altitude. For both For both For both vehicles. vehicles. And it was supposed to be. Uh, it looks like that's exactly what it is. It is, but what we're missing also is the um, speed over ground, course over ground for Hurricane Argus. Oh, yeah. Uh, Justin was saying that it's pretty easy to make one of your own of these. Uh, yeah, the the only uh, speed over ground we get is in this. Yeah, it's tough oh. to actually get that particular number. Yeah, number. And it always has I been. You're saying. Ben, ben couldn't get the number out where he could pull oh, it Oh, he into, couldn't spit it out, yeah. Into, into the database. Do we think that sponges are sort of dropping off here? I don't know. We see we have little. two. Yeah, maybe. And we. No. Every time I think that, we I look, know. they <laughs> reappear. They so seem totally. smaller. You yeah, know, I think they do see. You don't see those big dramatic. Well, we're not seeing so many boulders. So. Yeah. Oh, oh that's yeah. It's right. just this once we change. Uh, so it's not about depth, maybe just substrate. Yeah. Yeah. And turbulence. Yeah, I need to get better at reading the Grafana. Because that's got everything. Yeah, it's supposed to. <laughs> and it's like in reasonable size fonts and reasonably arranged and stuff. Yeah, I wanted to be able to read it without my glasses. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's as it should be. Over 40 app that I have <laughs> on my iPhone. <laughs> is it really called Over 40? There is an Over 40 app for your <laughs> iPhone. That, that's our... The kids tease me on the big numbers on the Grafana screen there. So when we were, when we were laying all that out, oh, fish. it took like five times of, nope, bigger, can't see it, bigger, can't <laughs> see it. Because they're sitting at a, you know, it's a nice eel. half a meter away from their laptop with their 2020 vision. Yeah. I like it because I, I read the depth from over here on that screen. <laughs> Yeah, I want to be able to see it from across the room. And that oh, sorry, the altitude. is definitely a longer, you know, that the more bullet-shaped one we so saw earlier. This is totally different. Yeah, we've been seeing the cutthroat. Zoom video? This one's at least half a meter, too. And also that, that model deal. Is he going to get angry when we zoom again? Sinophobe He's going to open his mouth. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah. there he goes. That's it. I've had enough of you. That was from the bunk, though. Yeah. I don't know. It's Do you think it's like from the, the zoom? zoom. Bitch, or yeah. the sound. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't like the, the zoom. Better back it Sorry, off. buddy. I'm getting out of here. That same move. That's so Three weird. Zero meters bearing it's like the Three second or third time off. we've seen that behavior. I don't know if it's correlated to the Thank zoom or not. You. It could just be. He could just be angry. We could do like an experiment. We're so loud. Yeah. We get close. Yeah. And we're just, of course, we're always zooming on the eels. And so. I'm always following him. Yeah. Could be the same eel the whole time. Yeah. This entire Indeed. cruise. I'm wondering <laughs> if we get into that it's undulating substrate, if it's going to make a difference. In that case, he's that eel is following us. That's right. If he's ma get he's more, making a choice. More dense. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's on. Yeah. Here. Some Walteria sponges, yeah, some whip corals. It's starting to drop off a bit. This might be a good place to. Well, look right behind us. There's more sponges. <laughs> yeah, and I wonder, again, if, if we get into that rocky. So this is pretty. They're smaller, though. They're yeah, they definitely are smaller. So if you're just joining us, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where in the world you are. We're here diving on Don Quixote Seamount in Papahanu. So you Papa get the Hanu. undulation. Oh, here we go. Here's some. Uh, yeah. And we're seeing some bigger ones there. Not much bigger, but a little bit. But the density isn't here. Yeah. No, the density isn't um, what we saw up in, well, 50 meters up, 60 meters up. But that guy's definitely bigger than what we saw, and we're in more of an undulating area. What direction? That's looking north. 
east, east to northeast. Yeah, east northeast. Hmm. Interesting. We could start following that back up, I suppose. Yeah, you want to? Well, if we're going to do that, should we drop a pin? Yeah. And say why we did what we're doing? Yeah. Uh, r bumpier bathymetry, you know, f a bumpier I, substrate. I feel like this is just a little seam. Oh, you think it's just a little uh, like low a bait? Little, yeah. Oh, it might just be the bottom of a low bait. Right, because like it's Never smooth mind, on both sides. By. Oh, do you see? In yeah, Argus? I see that. It's just a small. Yeah. So maybe it doesn't go up. But the sponges are getting smaller and a bit more sparse. Mm -hmm. What's a low bait? Like when you get to the end of a something that's going through a canyon and it gets to the end like a uh, alluvian fan, right? And it fans out into like a or a glacier coming out of a valley and it hits the foot of the valley and it and it spreads out a low bait feature oh kind of like a rock delta yes yeah we could start zooming uh, zigging back up like uh-huh yeah, just take a different tacked up. Zero eight, uh, something like zero eight zero. Let's see Zoom what we video? see. And then if the next watch wants to drop down, back down, they could. Yeah. But we don't want to put them in too far of a hole where they spend their whole watch <laughs> sending. Yeah. <laughs> but we, nope, you know, work. there are um, sponges below us. I don't what know. We that? could just say the pin can just say a less density. Yeah. Reduce density. Yeah. <laughs> so that dead sponge that looks kind of like a spinal column is a Ferididae sponge. No longer alive. So we're here on Papahanu Mokuakea Marine Monument, west of the Hawaiian Islands, where we've been exploring for seven dives. This is our seventh dive in this area. Also, we've been doing some mapping. If you want to learn more about this expedition's goals or about the monument itself, you can find that information on our website, nautiluslive.org. Papahanu Mokuakea can be a bit much to... Uh, Google, if you don't know how to spell it, so you can mm -hmm. uh, go to our zero. website. Yeah, I called on the stop about a minute ago. Is there any other rearrangement you guys want to do, or is this good? We'll be fine. Seems like you'll just need to wait for uh, Argus to yeah. swing back up. All right, I'll call her in. Bridge, Nav. And we did drop a pin. Yeah. Can we move zero five zero meters bearing zero eight zero? Zero five zero ML or zero eight? Did I hear she you? She said say? fifty meters zero eight zero. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, fifty meters zero eight zero. Um. Yeah. So let me show you where I've dropped pins the last couple. So I have this one right here. Sponge density size. Uh, density and size decreases, and that is 10 meters, um, 35 degrees northeast of where we are now. And then I just dropped one maybe two minutes ago, right when I called in an all stop that said reduce sponge density. And I put a note that it was the lower limit. Oh. You want me to drop one more pin where we are? I guess we've gone to maybe another eight meters from that point. Do you want me to do one more? I don't think so. I mean, I think we got our point across, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. We're just now really trying to consider the variables here that could be controlling this. So we're trying to, as systematically as we can, start um, analyzing, observing the differences associated yep, with those sorry. variables. 
And what are some of the variables that right, come right you down. think might be important? Well, depth is one that we're looking at the most, um, probably. Um, and we're, all of these we're kind of considering in relationship to the current. So we look at depth and we wonder if these populations are changing by depth is one of the things that controls that current or the density of nutrients. And we're also looking at the angle of um, the slope. Nav, um, could you zoom out a bit? Yeah, absolutely. And Thanks. is that angle c controlling or affecting the current? We're also looking at the That's direction good. of the face and how that face is um, interacting with the current. And then we're also trying to um, consider how strong the current is. You notice we keep asking Gabby, uh, do you feel a lot of current? Is that a beautiful crinoid? It looks like it, but it's different than oh, yeah. some of the ones we've been seeing. I love it. <laughs> it knows spiritually. <laughs> Look at it. It's fantastic, that color. Yeah. Yeah, it's just beautiful. So some of these variables that you were talking about, like depth and oxygen saturation, are recorded continuously, pretty much, by the vehicles. But some of the other ones, like the current strength and direction, are a little bit harder to pin down. Right. And so that's something that we're trying to consider. And the how a current changes in 3D space can be um, pretty extreme because they're... Um, influenced by the topography and um, turbulence. So that might be something that we have a hard time quantifying. But we would just want to establish the general relationship the best we can because the goal is to be able to um, predict where these populations might be the most dense and most diverse so that we can uh, make policy decisions that best protect them. I think another thing that I've heard um, Chris Kelly, another mission scientist, talking about is we know of so few of these high density, high diversity areas that the more we find and can characterize and kind of outline, the better we will know where to look for more of them. Yes, exactly. What's that small thing beneath the sponge? Is that a baby sponge? Chris is saying he's seen a cup coral. Yeah. Oh. yeah. It is. So. That's a very good eye. Oh, wow. Huh. We got sharp eyes on the watch today for it being midnight to 4 a.m. After Thanksgiving. Chris, so. too. <laughs> Tryptophan. Hey, it's now Black Coral Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, You've been sitting on that one. <laughs> uh, Black Coral Friday. It's only about Friday. an hour. <laughs> Who can put a price on the amazing things we've seen? Whatever it is, it's... 20% off today, friends. The doorbuster. That crinoid is the doorbuster. Yeah, so I think that that uh, two-toned uh, crinoid that we saw yeah. looks like a... Oh, boy, can I even uh, attempt to pronounce this? Xenometridae? No, this one. Oh. Go for it. No, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Emil, Emil, you want to you wanna chime in on this? Xenometra day. Pastherometra? Sathrometra? Argus is starting to move there. Yeah, I see it. I'm and switching my direction. Dialed into Ready zero, to eight, zero. Ready to start. Yeah. Is the P silent? I don't know. Stay in the box. Bearing is the ship. Yeah. 
Is the bee silent? I don't know. I am not quite sure. For those of you at home, the that two-toned uh, crinoid that we were looking at earlier appears to be a P-S-A-T-H-Y-R-O-M-E-T-R-A. -E Ding! I got lost with that Just first seems letter. Just like a <laughs> lot of consonants. Yeah, could, by, could by a vowel there, uh, <laughs> crinoid. Look at that cool uh, feature up ahead of um, Argus in the rock. Just like um, a line that's a different color yep. or something. Go check it out. Off you go. Off I go. I want to try to pronounce that. You want to write it down? Oh, yeah. Can't see you back there. Oh, I see. It's on one side, it's smooth, and on the other side, the dark side is the... Yep. Is Catches the, the light differently. Yeah, totally. South of Romadia. Well, it looks, that sounds like... South of what? South of Romadia. South of Romadia. South of Romadia. That's how, yeah, exactly. You know, There's that's a kind of funny, but it's not far off. <laughs> South of Rometra, maybe. Oh, is that an R? Yeah. Okay. I thought it was an I. South, South, Ro South of Rometra. Yeah, yeah, I think you got it. Yeah, I think you do. Teamwork good. makes the dream work. We got it. Good size sponge up ahead, but do it looks like it's on the laminar part on the sheet. Yeah, it, it does. does. We, yeah. Which is, Backwards. gosh, like it's really hard to make a hypothesis that pans out with these sponges. Well, yeah. you'll always have anomalies. Right. What you need to do is vaporize them. No. <laughs> <laughs> just just <laughs> what you mean? Uh, cut the video for that part. <laughs> no, I mean you will always have anomalies, you know, especially in the biological setting. But it, we can go up there and in investigate that anomaly. Ooh, you bumped a rock. Zoom. Out for that rock. Oh, I did that on purpose. Should I not have? No, that's all right. Okay. Oh, that's a black coral, right? Yeah. Yes. I just wanted to say hi to the black coral real quick. <sighs> black Coral Friday. Black Coral exactly, Friday. Exactly, exactly. In celebration. Mm -hmm. Doorbuster. Okay. Let's get out of here. Thanks so much uh, for checking in on our website, nautiluslive.org. We got some folks checking in from all around the world. It's great to have you with us here as we explore together on the seamount in Papahanaumokuakea Marine Monument. Let's see what this guy is attached to. Which guy? The one that's we're coming right up on. I think it's Bridge. a snap. Well, I see him in the Argus view, so he's right above you. Oh, okay. The not the lettuce one that's on the left of the Herc screen, no. but no. the bearing zero eight zero. This Bigger, guy, brighter. Uh huh. It's on a flat, that's on the low bait. Flatish. Yeah. yeah. Is that guy yellow? I think I. He's got the, the sort of like growths on like yeah, the sediment. Yeah, growths or sediment or something. Thank you. Oh, okay. I don't think he's yellow. Not. Not himself, anyways. Uh -huh. See, I don't th see anything. I don't see anything undulating. So I say he is an anomaly to that hypothesis, but that doesn't mean that that hypothesis will hold, right? So no, that guy says it doesn't. It's pointing up slope, though. Yeah. Oh, he is. Or is that? Uh, or is it just open on the side? It's got a concave side facing up slope. Oh, huh. yeah, you're right. Well, what the heck? <laughs> He blows everything out of the water. He is upslope. I think the original science question is always what the heck, right? Yeah. And then we just, <laughs> and then we just refine it from there. The yeah. truth. That is, that is a real truth here. Well, that is an anomaly there. I don't know what sense to make of... So you can't poo-poo the existence of that anomaly because he grew that big. Yeah, you're That's really big. big. Yeah. I think the little rocks around here are just so little that they're not very good to be a sponge on. Yeah, might yeah. be. Yeah. 
And at some point, if you're a sponge, you just gotta go with it, what you got. Mm -hmm. Oh, spo the sponges when they are small, they're floating through the water column and then they stick to a substrate. Is that kind of how they get their start? I think so, something like that. They um, they definitely are floating and then find a place and attach and I think if the conditions are right, they grow. Sorry, Dan, I came up a little fast for you there. No, that's all right. We're creating quite a quite a drawing here on the high pack. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our uh, USBL hasn't been. It's had some wild pings, so we have these sharp angles everywhere. Kate, do you want to give me a reset? Ah, yes, I do. You're like I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done it in one hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> are you ready? Yeah, do it. There you are. It feels very luxurious to have all these like nav options. It is. I'd, like, I agree. You know, last 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 dive, I was like strictly on the USBL. Like, that was it. Yeah. Because we didn't have any Doppler to speak of. Now we have really good Doppler, and I'm like, oh, maybe I'll just look at the Doppler, and that'll be good too. What are those uh, little spots off to the left? Too? Spots off to the left. They look like, like maybe dead corals or something. Those three right there, kind yeah. of in a triangle. Yeah. Oh. It looks like are maybe you impact at Herc or Argus here. Uh, we're looking in uh, Herc Cam. Herc. That okay. triangle of. It looks like two small Walterias. That we're oh, not I was gonna living. say just like little divots in the rock, hey? Yeah, I, I like agree. maybe oh, the impact from something. It's little gatherings of sediment. Oh, it's just, okay. So. Yeah, like some scour for something. But I don't know what. Was it a sponge? Sponges were there before? Huh. And that's their footprint? I think it's just... Can sponges do that to the rock? I don't know. I mean, it, they would definitely, if they were there for a long period of time, and then they disappeared. That would not be a place where manganese crust would grow. Oh, interesting. I was thinking, like, so when you have, like, trees grow on rocks on land, they break down the rock. Right. Mm -hmm. Root wedging. Yeah. Um, do you sp it seems like it wouldn't be advantageous if sponges did that. Because yeah, then they it doesn't would topple. Seem like, yeah, and it doesn't seem we see any evidence of that. They seem just to be glued to the rock, you know, like those little fibers. But not actually going through the rock or channeling deep through the rock for more nutrients, you know, like you would yeah. see in a tree. I guess that's not where they get their food from, so. Right. All they need to do is stay upright. Can you um, slide to your left a bit as you come up there? Yeah, sure. Let that slide uh, out of my face. Drop a target here, sparse sponges. Or no sponges. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you Try that reset yeah. again. It must have ended up on a bad ping. I mean, not that bad, like a little bad. Or I was just moving too fast. No, well, so we're on a different side of the ship, too. So I'm wondering if that just has something to do with it. All right, you ready? Yep, I'm ready. There we go. OK. Right after we drop that target, we see some sponges. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, Kay, to drop a target? For I dropped okay. the target. What would Sorry you like that. me to name Maybe it? Um, sparse okay. sponges. You'll have to keep your same 080 eight zero heading. But yeah. If we dragged it to the sideways, think we're going to go 10 meters yeah, and have to your drop face. a different totally. target. Mm -hmm. I'm here to drop as many targets as you guys need. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So a viewer is asking, what are we dropping? Are we leaving something on the seafloor? Can... When you oh. get a chance, can you talk about oh, dropping that's targets? A, that's a really interesting. Yeah, that's a very um, literal. Waypoint. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> when dropping we say, waypoints. Yeah, when we say dropping target, it's literally I'm making a waypoint in the navigation software. So I'm attaching a latitude and a longitude and a depth 
uh, to an observation. So all shift, it's really been corresponding to the density or size for sponges. So high density, low density, small, big, and you've heard us talk about this probably for the last three yeah. hours. We don't shut up about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so as we're making these observations, we can drop targets. And so I'm literally just making an X, Y, Z point in the navigation software. And over time, they add up and you can get a better picture of kind of or help build towards our hypothesis of why we see more dense corals, more dense sponges in certain areas. And it just gives the scientists an additional um, kind of spatial reference to what they're also were sampling and so forth. Excellent description. Yes, awesome sauce, Kate. Do you have to enter the Z manually every time, Kate? Yeah, I am. It would be cool if we could get that feed directly in, um, but I don't think HiPAC can support that. That has to be painful. Why Why doesn't it automatically put the depth in? Um, I don't know. We can call up HiPAC and ask their <laughs> software developers. <laughs> you have to pay extra for that. Much. How much will they charge for that question? <laughs> Customer service, I have a need. <laughs> upgrade to high pack premium. Ah, yes. Limited time offer. Maybe they have a Black Friday deal. <laughs> Maybe. Black Coral Friday for your high pack. Seems that would be like a pretty important part of the yeah, so the whole package there. Right, we we get our feeds into high pack that's showing our vehicle position, our ROV positions, and so forth. And that's like configured into the hardware, but the vessel is a uh, certain and this is just like me guessing here but knowing a little bit about software development and how all these feeds work the vessel is a whole I, or when i make a target that's a whole different little probably bit of code that just doesn't connect to the bit of code that brings in these feeds of depths and so forth which is unfortunate um yeah Zoom out briefly now, just a couple of clicks. Oh, on the high pack screen? Yep. Yes, so guessing more clicks than that. Yeah. A uh, little bit of a change in slope here, maybe? Maybe we could make the, the climb a little bit more towards like zero four five. Okay. See if we can regain some sponges. Yeah. Are you guys able to adjust to a zero four five? Yeah, I have actually sort of been naturally finding that, like as I track the strike of the slope. So that would be awesome. Awesome. I keep Let's ending up there, anyways. Bridge, Nav. Yeah, I'm looking zero four five too. So. Can we move one zero zero meters? Going along sideways to four five. So we're not bashing on the tether. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, like, without thinking about it too hard, like, I end up at these headings, I end up going off in the direction of the strike of the slope. This usually just feels more comfortable to pilot, yeah. like, perpendicular to the slope. It looks nicer. The light feels more even. Mm -hmm. Great question coming in. Uh, based off our discussion There's about a, the waypoints. to your left there. Uh, Dr. Seuss? I think so, yeah. So how much data are we collecting every minute or every second? Ooh. Oh. Any uh, ideas, friends? Gigabytes. <laughs> yeah, here, let me actually, give me a second. I'll poke around. I can probably get an answer for y'all. And it's, it's all different types of data. Still Dude, images, video, uh, the Grafana, the nav. Seems like every seat in here has their own data set that uh, is being collected. I would guess that the full resolution video is the most data in terms of yeah. quantity. Uh, I think I went to get some clips from Justin today and then each 15 minute clip is like 18 gigabytes or something. So wow. Okay, so let's say a gigabyte a minute of video. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, or like several per second. What the, it's a 3G video stream off the Zeus and the Argus. Are those the only two cameras that are captured? Those are the two high definition cameras. Nice. It's, how much is it? 
it's 3G video. So the uh, bit rate of the stream is 